Good afternoon, and welcome to the Franklin and Marshall College Convocation Ceremony that marks the beginning of the 2023-2024 academic year. You may now be seated. We gather today on the homeland of Native peoples whose history is integral to our past and present, but long denied. In addition to the Susquehannock, who lived here in the 17th century, this land was home to the Lenape, Nanticoke, 
Piscataqua, Seneca and Haudenosaunee Confederacy, Shawnee, and others throughout the millennia. We acknowledge that Franklin and Marshall College's presence here is a direct legacy of settler colonialism. As a college community, we commit ourselves to the ongoing work of acknowledging and respecting those who came before us on these lands and to act collectively to support Native communities. The flags within today's processional and showcased here reflect our respect for and the celebration of all f and students, both nationally and internationally. These country of citizenship flags represent the international diversity within the class of 2027 and the importance of the global f and community. Please rise, if you are able, for the invocation led by Joseph Pritchett, Director of Faith and Meaning. Let us first give thanks. We find space for gratitude on this busy day because you've made it to this place, gathered together with others sharing this journey. As we come together to usher in the academic year and embrace the hope that comes with new beginnings and new places, I ask these things. May you seek knowledge, question often, Think deeply and critically. May you find community, celebrate difference, come to know one another, and in those experiences, come to know yourself. May you know this as a place where you belong, where we all recognize our inherent human dignity. May you rise to the challenge, embracing the successes and struggles that lie ahead. Open yourself up to the possibilities of this time and place, these experiences, and these people. Let us be open to what this day and every day following it might offer. You may be seated. Welcome members of the FNM community, President Altman, trustees, faculty and administration, alumni, and parents and families joining us today and online. I'm Helen Grayson, Dean of Admission, and I have the pleasure of presenting the class of 2027 and incoming transfer students. As is the tradition, today's convocation serves as the presentation and acceptance of the incoming class of students. Together we celebrate the beginning of these students' academic careers at FNM. Let me introduce the 561 members of the class of 2027 and 12 transfer students joining us from other colleges and universities. Selected from over 9,500 submitted applications, this group includes 14% of, of this group are students who held a leadership role in their community. 12% were active in community service. 8% participated in research projects during their high school career. 31% were involved in the performing or studio arts. And 27% will be participating in varsity athletics at FNM. Go Dips. These students hail from 31 states, including Washington, D.C., and 26 different countries, adding to the already distinguishable global diversity of the FNM community. Collectively, you've traveled over 375,000 miles to join us in Lancaster. As individuals, the members of the class are exceptional. Each and every one of them earned their spot here at FNM. Together, a mosaic of differing backgrounds and perspectives, they will enrich our educational community and becoming the diplomats our world needs. I am proud to present the class of 2027 and transfer students to the faculty. 
To accept, on behalf of the faculty, I welcome Mary Osirum, Interim Provost and Dean of the Faculty. Thank you, Helen. Will the class of 2027 and transfer students please stand? As stated in the FNM College mission, FNM seeks to foster in our students qualities of intellect, creativity, and character. On behalf of the faculty of the college, I welcome and accept the class of 2027 and transfer students to Franklin and Marshall College. You may be seated. This day represents a pivotal moment for you, your families, and all those who helped you on your journey to FNM. Now, a new journey is about to begin. The window on stage signifies the beginning of your time at FNM. Inscribed with the Franklin and Marshall College motto, Lux et Lex, which means light and law, the window is a symbol of your lifelong pursuit of knowledge and truth. Commissioned by the FNM Alumni Association, we hope that this window will be a constant reminder that you are now part of a community that seeks to learn from and with each other and to create a better world. You are diplomats forever. I now introduce our convocation faculty and student speakers. Dr. Jennifer Redman, professor of German, and Department Chair of German, Russian, and East Asian Languages, and Muna Sultana, Class of 2024, Student Body President and Diplomatic Congress President. Dr. Jennifer Redman has been a professor in German since 2009. She teaches at all levels of FNM's nationally recognized, innovative German curriculum. In 2020, she was honored by the American Association of Teachers of German with their Outstanding German Educator Award. Dr. Redman was recognized by the FNM community as an outstanding teacher, mentor, and colleague in receiving the Christian R. and Mary E. Lindback Foundation Distinguished Teaching Award in 2022. Muna Sultana is a senior at FNM with a joint major in international relations and government with a minor in women's, gender, and sexuality studies. She serves as the president of the student body and the diplomatic congress. After 25 years of teaching, I still get nervous on the first day of class, but this is a whole other first day, so. <laughs> but I'm excited to be here. Good afternoon, members of the class of 2027, transfer students, and your families. In everyday terms, a diplomat is someone who is skilled at managing situations and dealing with other people. FNM diplomats can do that, and so much more. 
They're smart, curious, hardworking, busy, very, very busy, as I'm sure Muna will tell you about, uh, empathetic and idealistic. And starting today, you are one of them. That said, becoming an f and diplomat is not an automatic process. It's not like someone hands you your ID card and then poof, you are magically transformed. And I heard it was a long line for the ID cards today too, so you have already gone over a hurdle, so that's good. Becoming a diplomat takes time and effort. Living as a diplomat means committing to important values that inform everything we, and I'm looking particularly at my colleagues here, everything we do. Values like deep and broad knowledge of multiple subject areas, open and effective communication, critical and creative thinking, and a deep desire to make a meaningful contribution to the world. So you're here, you've arrived, and your journey to becoming an FNM diplomat is about to begin. This is day one, and so you may be wondering, where do I start? How do I start? First and foremost, then, I want to tell you to focus on finding yourself in your courses. You're here to study and learn, and your coursework really should occupy most of your time and energy. Once classes start, make yourself known to your professors as soon as you can. You are why we are here, and we want to know you. Make a plan to visit each of your professors in their office hours within the first few weeks of the semester. I mean this, now take out your phones and open Google Calendar, and no, I don't mean that. But I am serious, you'll have four classes and four professors, so plan to make four visits. You don't have to have a problem or even a question, just stop by for a conversation so we can know you. Second, get to know the other students in your classes. When I walk into my classroom in the first few minutes before a class period starts, I am often struck by the silence. Even if the room is half full, nearly every student has their head down and they're looking silently at their phones. So of course, I immediately start talking to them in German. If you aren't lucky enough to have a professor getting in your face in a foreign language, Consider using those five minutes on the first day of class to actually talk to the person next to you. Who knows what might happen? You may end up meeting someone you can study with and learn from, someone who could become part of your f and family. And once you've started to find yourself in the classroom, you'll want to find your place in other campus spaces. You are already a member of a college house, you're sitting with your college housemates, and your house affiliation can and should be an important part of your diplomat identity. The other dimensions of your campus identity are up to you, and this is where you begin to become someone new, perhaps. You may find yourself in a music ensemble or a Greek organization. It may be on an athletic field or the airwaves of the campus radio station, WFNM, best call sign. It may, it may be in the dance studio or in any of the more than 100 student organizations that will welcome you enthusiastically. The choices are all yours. Many campus spaces will soon feel very familiar to you, but another important part of any f and diplomat's identity is their connection to the city of Lancaster. Lancaster is your new hometown. I encourage you to venture into the city. It's just a 20 minute walk, it's this way, it's not far, you won't get lost. And I want you to go there as soon as you can, maybe even this weekend, to find your new favorite cafe, vintage boutique, art gallery, cupcake shop, or Swedish candy store. We actually have a Swedish candy store here. Lancaster is a vibrant, diverse, small city, and here on campus, the Ware Institute for Civic Engagement can set you up with volunteer opportunities that will help you connect to communities within the city. Many current f and students have conducted research in the city or interned with a Lancaster business or nonprofit organization, so start making connections early like they did. And finally, although our campus is small, you are a future f and diplomat in the world, as Dean Grayson just said. The Office of International and Off-Campus Study here at f and uses the social media hashtag, hashtag the world need, needs more diplomats, and this hashtag is really works because it's true. I know you have literally just arrived on campus, but it is not too early to start thinking about where you might go for off-campus study. And I hope that for many of you, it will be to a non-English speaking country. 
when you are immersed in another language and culture, when you truly make that language your own, you open up new dimensions of your identity that you don't even know about now. You begin to recognize the words you've always used, the ways you're used to thinking, the choices you automatically make are the products of your cultural upbringing. And when you start thinking and speaking and acting in new and unfamiliar ways, you will come to know yourself and the world both differently and more deeply. For the international students in the class of 2027, this process is already underway and I am proud of you for taking this step. The Italian author and professor Teresa De Laridis once wrote that she had no real concept of her own Italian identity until she came to live in the United States. For only through sustained contact with Americans did she see for the first time how Italian her way of being actually was. So regardless of where you're from, you are about to embark on a years-long journey of discovery, one that begins right now, and I am very excited for you. And you now have the good fortune to hear from a fellow student, your president of the student body, Muna Sutana, class of 24, about her own journey to becoming an FNM diplomat. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Redvin, and hello, class of 2027 and transfer students. It is my honor to welcome you to the FNM family as student body president of Franklin and Marshall College. Three years ago, I sat in the very seats you are sitting in now. Well, figuratively. It was Zoom and there weren't really speeches, but my point still stands. Three years ago, I joined the FNM family as a bright-eyed first-year student from New York City, eager to make my mark on the world. And I remember it like it was yesterday. This next week will be filled with orientation events, crew meetings, and learning the alphabet soup of acronyms here at FNM. But you'll learn a lot more than just that during your time here. During my first few weeks of college, I learned how to ride a bike for my new friends. We would practice in the Wendy's parking lot across the street and take our aspirational cars to the drive through usually in the middle of the night. See, college isn't just about attending your classes and going back to your college house room to sleep. It's so much more than that. College is about learning your place in this world, figuring out how to be independent, figuring out what you love, what you hate, and everything in between. The college experience you will have over the next four years will be ingrained in your memory for a lifetime. The first friend you make in your hall, the first all-nighter you pull, the first time you go to Waffle House across the corner, which once again will likely be at 2 a.m. You'll start referring to the Steinman College Center as CC, arguing over which library is better to study in, Shad or Martin. I mean, Shaddock Fackenthal Library, or Martin Science Library, that is. And the only right answer is Martin, by the way. Take a moment to look across the room. Take in the Centennial Conference Championships posted on the wall, the track we miraculously turned into a world-class auditorium. This will be your home for the next four years, and the peers you're sitting with today will be your family for a lifetime. Throughout my time as an FNM diplomat, I have had the opportunity to serve as an American diplomat as well, studying abroad in the Middle East, interning on Capitol Hill, and working with the U.S. State Department over the last two years, most recently in Dubai. I've had the honor of speaking with President Barack Obama and serving alongside our country's most esteemed diplomats. None of this would have been impossible without the support I have received from FNM, specifically from the faculty and staff at this institution. The lessons I've learned in the classrooms at FNM have carried me into becoming a better global citizen, asking questions and poking at uncertainties until I understand complex global issues. It fueled a fire within me to become the best version of myself, inside and outside of the classroom, and to take initiative at spaces where I would normally stay dormant. As mentioned before, at FNM, we often reference our motto, Lux et Lex, which can be translated to light and law. And for me, light and law can be seen as a metaphor for finding clarity in law, illuminating details hidden by shadows and pursuing the truth in a fair and just society. This embodies the missions of students in our FNM family, pursuing answers to difficult questions in an attempt to understand the complex world around them. When you walk through the Lux at Lex archway next week, 
you will officially join a family of not just your fellow students, but of also 30,000 alumni dedicated to Lux at Lex. This network will guide you through every step of your college journey and well beyond. To the parents, family members, and loved ones who are joining us, know that we are grateful for all of your support and guidance, for the seemingly endless target runs and care packages, packed cars filled to the brim with Brittas and clothes we'll probably never wear throughout the year. Your dedication is vital to our transition into adulthood. And for students, you may or may not have a family here today. But regardless, I want you to know that you have an FNM family standing right behind you. Your HAs, your college house leaders, your deans and dons, and nearly every other student you will meet across this campus will be your cheerleader. We will be there when you fall, because inevitably we all do, and help pick you back up. We will be there for your greatest successes, for every A on a paper or job you hear back from. We have your back, just like family does. No matter what city, state, or country you're from, you have something to offer at FNM. You will learn a lot here, but we will learn from you as well. In every aspect of my FNM journey, I bring along my Pakistani identity, teaching my friends how to cook biryani and learning how to make pastelitos from them. Just like adding a pinch of salt to a recipe, the mutual exchange of ideas and cultures that you have here at FNM will truly enhance your experience and make you a diplomat. In my tenure as FNM's student body president of the Diplomatic Congress and student body, I hope to leave you with these three things. Remember that you always have a family behind you. Remember to keep your eyes open for any opportunities that may come your way. And remember to make memories, because this is the time to do so. Thank you. Now, it is my honor to welcome Vice President of Student Affairs, Andrew Du Stelges, to recognize the College Houses. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to Franklin and Marshall. You are now part of the community. It is my pleasure to tell you about the recognition of College Houses in leadership. In 2005, Franklin and Marshall faculty and trustees endorsed the establishment of the faculty-led College House residential system to enrich the academic and social opportunities of our students. The 2023-2024 academic year marks the 19th year of the College House residential model and the full engagement of the student-run house governments in faculty-initiated programs and activities. The House provides facilities and support for faculty to create programs and events that enrich their students' intellectual experiences and bring students and faculty together outside of formal classroom activities. It's part of what makes us so spectacular. Today at Convocation, students sit with members of their college houses to emphasize the important role these residential communities will play in their educational experiences. At this time, I'd like to recognize the FNM College Houses and their leadership and honor the commitment of the newest students. Will President Altman and the College House leaders please stand and join me to be recognized? Representing Rochelle College House, I invite Jorge Mena Ali, Assistant Dean of Faculty Diversity Initiatives and the Rochelle College House Don to come forward. Is it on? Yeah, now it's on. <laughs> on behalf of myself and um, Courtney Jordan Cox, Assistant Dean of Student Affairs and Rochelle College House um, Dean, it is my honor to introduce the Council of the Rochelle College House Senate, Aria Ogale. Representing Brooks College House, I invite Alexis Castor, Professor of Classics and Brooks College House Don, to come forward. 
On behalf of myself and Jedrick Daneros, Assistant Dean of Student Affairs and Brooks College House Dean, I introduce President of Brooks College House Congress, Juliette Jerome. I invite Dorothy Meritz, Professor of Geosciences and Weiss College House Don, to welcome to come forward and represent the leadership of Weiss College House. On behalf of myself and Melissa Geis, Assistant Dean of Student Affairs and Weiss College House Dean, I introduce representing on behalf of the Chair of the Weiss College House Assembly of Peers, Alan Grove. I invite Justin Hopkins, Assistant Director of the Writing Center, Professor of English, and the Ware College House Don to come forward and represent the leadership of Ware College House. On behalf of myself and Shuai Shao, Assistant Dean of Student Affairs and the Ware College House Dean, I'm happy to introduce the Prime Minister of the Ware College House Parliament, Kiernan Keeler. And I invite Christine Pirro, Associate Professor of Chemistry, Bonchek College House Don, to come forward to present the leadership of Bonchek College House. On behalf of myself, and Beth Prophet, the Assistant Dean of Student Affairs and Dean of Bonchek College House. I introduce the Chancellor of the Bonchek Congress, Amaya McIntyre Taylor. And now, College House leaders, please come forward as President Altman recites the FNM College Investiture. By the authority vested in me by the FNM Board of Trustees, I cause the Honorable Chancellor McIntyre Taylor, Prime Minister Keller, President Jerome, Representative Grove, and Senate Consul Ogle to be invested as the leaders of your college houses. I wish them all well. I wish you all well as you take up the challenges of leading your college houses. Thank you. I now welcome Muna Sultana, President of the Student Body and Diplomatic Congress, back to the podium to read the College House Pledge, Class of 2027, and transfer students. Please stand. Class of 2027 and transfer students, do you pledge to uphold the standards and accept the responsibilities of being a member of your College House? To accept this pledge, please respond with me by enthusiastically saying, we will. We will. <laughs> Y'all got a B minus on that one. You may be seated. Today begins your individual journey within your respective college house, but also your collective journey as a member of the class of 2027. At FNM, we are here for you. You belong here. You need to be nothing more than the true person you are. We are honored that you have chosen FNM because of who you are. Belonging is being part of something that's bigger, but also having the courage to stand alone and to belong to yourself above all else. You don't need to try to fit in here. You don't need to try to change who you are. Who you are is why you're here. Your uniqueness 
makes us spectacular. The true essence of you is what we seek from you, nothing more. You belong now and forever. On Tuesday, you will come together again to pass through the archway in the center of campus with the insignia Lux et Lex. Your walk signifies the beginning of ac your academic journey at FNM and as the class of 2027. And we will applaud you with great applause as you walk around campus, faculty, staff, and alumni, because we celebrate the fact that you now belong to this community of learners. Only a few days before you graduate, you will again make this walk through campus and pass through the Luxette Lex Archway, this time representing the move into your postgraduate future. And then you will belong to a new community, the nearly 30,000 proud FNM alumni accomplishing great things across the country and around the world. They are diplomats forever, as you will be, inspiring others and embracing one another's unique talents. And for that, you deserve our applause. Please rise and join Reese Chang, class of 2024, in the singing of the FNM alma mater, conducted by Yasmin Nicholas, class of 2024. The convocation brass choir will play through the melody once, and we will welcome everyone to join Reese Chang in singing of our alma mater. the distinct honor to introduce FNM President Barbara K. Altman. Barbara K. Altman became the 16th president of Franklin and Marshall College in August 2018. You may be seated. <laughs> 
Dedicated to FNM's liberal arts mission and workforce preparation, President Altman led the largest campaign in the college's history to a successful conclusion and is currently leading the college through the implementation of a strategic plan entitled LEAD, Leveraging Excellence, Accelerating Discovery. This plan will position FNM to better respond to student priorities and academic interests, invest in student and alumni success, and ensure institutional sustainability. In addition to her leadership at FNM, President Altman is currently an elected member of the Board of Directors of the Association of Independent Colleges and Universities of Pennsylvania and the Board of Trustees of the Council for Advancement and Support of Education, as well as the Fulton Theater and the Economic Development Company of Lancaster. Before FNM, Dr. Altman spent 25 years at the University of Oregon as a faculty member and an administrator and served as provost at Bucknell University. She earned her PhD in French from the University of Toronto. Please join me in a warm welcome for President Altman. Thank you, Muna, for that generous introduction. I look forward to working closely with you this year in your role as president of the Diplomatic Congress. The Madam's President will meet regularly. Class of 2027, transfer students, welcome. Faculty, staff, returning students, welcome back. To our wonderful brass ensemble on my right, many thanks, many thanks. And they're not done yet. And a very good afternoon to everyone watching on the live stream with us today. A very special and warm welcome to all the families in the hall. In years past, we have held convocation after families left Lancaster and just before classes begin. This year, we're so happy to have you with us for this threshold moment in your students' lives. The word convocation comes from the Latin verb convocare, meaning to call together. And having you with us as your children enter the FNM community signals just how much we value you families as part of that community too. Now, all of you have been sitting very patiently, families. May I ask that all family members in the room and friends of new students rise as you are able Please rise, we are sitting families. All right, students, there they are. Look at them all, you are surrounded by them. How fabulous. Students, this is your chance to recognize your families publicly. Let's all recognize them with a round of applause, please. Parents, siblings, stay on your feet just a moment, if you will. Parents, siblings, loving relatives, friends, you are taking a leap of faith, and we are most grateful that you see FNM as the place where your children can thrive and grow. We promise to help them find their way. And please know that the next time you see them, they will already have started on that journey, and they will have changed. Thank you, families. Please be seated. It's a joy to have met some of you at Move In this morning. It's a joy to have met some of you when you toured campus. Somewhere in this hall, there is a fellow Albertan from Canada, which is a rare commodity that makes two of us. Uh, lovely to see you all. In a convocation address, it is customary to invoke an authority of some kind, a philosopher, a writer, a poet, to communicate a life lesson. I was tempted to refer to the lessons taught by Fred Rogers, creator of the very popular children's TV show, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, who was so very wise about helping children accept who they are and allow them to feel that sense of belonging that Vice President Stelges spoke about just a few minutes ago. 
But then I remembered that most of our new students were born after Mr. Rogers' show had ended in 2001, and that reference might not mean all that much to you. Instead, this year, I'd like to channel another popular cultural icon who is currently in the limelight. Okay, show of hands. Who has seen the new, very pink Barbie movie? Okay, actually, fewer than I thought. It's showing right up the road if you want to go. Who has heard about the Barbie movie? Okay, much bigger show of hands. That's good. Who had a Barbie doll or knew someone who had one or knows someone who has one? Okay, so among those three responses, we cover a lot of the, of the audience. A few minutes ago, you heard Muna Sultana introduce me as Barbara Altman, right? However, for the first two decades of my life, my siblings and my friends all called me, you guessed it? Barbie. <laughs> hey, that was good, thank you. Give me one moment while I add a fashion accessory. I am now happy to stand before you as President Barbie. <laughs> and yes, I did, in fact, marry a man named Ken. <laughs> OK, so how did Barbie become Barbara? I'm the child of immigrants to Canada. I did not live in mostly pink Barbie land. I have never looked like the actor Margot Robbie who plays Barbie in the movie, nor was I ever the most popular anything. I was, however, subjected to all of the same pressures to conform that girls my age had to deal with. It took me a while to figure out that it was okay to be smart. It took me longer than some to find out that a pair of basketball shoes and physicality felt great. It took trial and error to find my intellectual passion and then to have the courage to follow it into the world of 600-year-old books, dusty archives, graduate school teaching, and now the presidency of this very fine, very powerful school. I related to stereotypical movie Barbie, who had to figure out what it meant to get out of her high heels and get her feet down on the ground, literally and metaphorically. The Barbie who discovered that you often have to give up some comfortable things to attain others. The arc of the movie is all about Barbies and Ken's, too realizing themselves more fully and figuring out how to do that alongside the people you know and you love. A very recent review of the film from yesterday, actually, used a sentence that points out succinctly the relevance of the movie to this moment right here, right now, to the new students we are greeting today. Here's the quote from that review. The real magic is found in how they move towards maturity through imperfection and mistake. Let me read that again. The real magic is found in how they move towards maturity through imperfection and mistake. We all do a lot of that. In the end, Barbie makes a big choice. She says at a decisive moment in her evolution that, and I quote, I want to be one of the people that make meaning, unquote. I almost fell out of my chair when I heard that. That's another sentence worth repeating. I want to be one of the people that make meaning. I would have said who make meaning, but you know, that's the grammarian in me. You have made that same choice by coming here, students, and you'll be living it day by day, class by class, practice by practice, rehearsal by rehearsal, assignment by assignment, new friend by new friend, new choice by new choice. And you'll be doing it all in excellent company. Right now, right here, class of 27, are you listening? 
Okay, yes, okay, one more time. Are you listening to me, class of 27? Okay, much better, okay, thank you. Okay, because I am giving you your first homework assignment, and I am very serious about this, okay? Here is your first assignment. Call me crazy, but I'm asking every one of you, every one of our 561 new students and our transfer students, to send me a quick email, okay? I'm serious about that. Even a short one, a couple of sentences would be fine. What do I want you to write about? Well, you heard Professor Redmond discuss what it means to be a diplomat. You heard from your student government president, Muna Sultana, about making this place your own. And you heard Vice President Stelgis talk about belonging. So I want you to send me an email on one of two topics. You even got a choice, okay? Either tell me something new you did here on campus that made you feel like a diplomat, okay? What made you feel like you're really one of the family? Or, here's choice number two, how did you help somebody else on campus feel like a diplomat? So what did you do that made you feel like you belong? Or what did you do to make someone else feel like they belong? Because that's how a powerful community gets built. I am easy to find. You can email me at president at fnm.edu. That's easy to remember. I'm serious about this. I want to hear from every one of you within the next month, and I will respond to every email I get. I'm going to ask your house deans and dons, your faculty, your HAs, and your families to remind you to do it, okay? This is a group exercise in accountability. I promise you that I will keep track of them all, and within the next few weeks, I hope to have more than 560 messages that tell me you are finding your place, your rhythm, and beginning to see the world through diplomat eyes. Start today. You're all great students. Get this assignment done now. I'll be waiting with interest, and I, and I know that I will learn from your insights. We're coming to the end of this ceremony, and we're about to jump into the year. A few minutes ago, I asked friends and families of our new students to rise. Before we close, I want to ask another group of people in the audience to stand up. As you are able, may I ask returning students, all faculty, all professional staff, and administrators of the college to rise, please, if you would. And that includes all those people up along the balustrade up there. Okay, so, students, look up front to the stage. Look to your left, look to your right, even look behind you at the back, there are people standing. This is your other family, your new family, your F&M family. You are literally surrounded by people ready and eager to help you become your best self to make sure you are among the people who make meaning. Right now, dear transfer students and class of 27, you're off to a terrific start. We will be walking, all of us will be walking right by your side, and we can't wait to see how you teach and change us, even as we teach and change you, because in fact, together, we are diplomats forever. Thank you, colleagues. You may sit. So here's what happens next for an orderly exit, OK? I'm in charge of the logistics this time. So I'd like to ask all families and all guests and all new students to please remain seated during our ceremonial recessional. Once faculty and administrators have recessed down the center aisle, I feel like a flight attendant, <laughs> new students will be released by row. Students, please follow your college house dean. When you leave your seats, we invite you to assemble with your house dean and don in the back, in the rear area of the field house, at a table marked for your house. The college marshal, Professor Kim Armstrong, will be the last person to pass down the center aisle. 
Then, when Marshall Armstrong has passed down the aisle, the old main bell will toll again, and it will mark the conclusion of our ceremony and signal that it is time to say your farewells. Families and guests, that's your moment to join your students to exchange a cheerful and perhaps a little tearful goodbye for now. Students are expected to rejoin their college houses by 4.45 p.m. for your next orientation activity. We know that you will appreciate and cherish these last moments together. They're not final farewells, but rather a joyous au revoir. Thank you all. Safe journeys home. Good luck as you launch. And see you soon. Thank you.